Welcome to TV20 Sports Classics. I'm your host, Christian Patterson. The City of Cleveland's Government Access Station has been covering recreational sports events for over 20 years. There have been some amazing games and even a few surprises along the way. We here at TV20 would like to take a look back at some of these memorable events. So sit back and enjoy TV20 Classic Sports. We hope you enjoy. Everybody, my name is Joe Tate along with Tim Wells. We're about to bring you a very interesting game of baseball and to tell you in detail about this baseball championship affair and who these two teams are and what they're vying for, my partner, Big Tim. Tim? Hey Joe. It's the Cleveland Mickey Mantle League, kids 15 and 16 years old that had a chance in the city of Cleveland for the first time ever to play free. Um, a lot of the kids that play here today have gone through a regular season and playoffs for the right to play in today's city championship game. And ultimately, they are going for the chance to be state champions. Um, and they'll go to Youngstown, Ohio, representing the city of Cleveland. Uh, two of the teams that made it that were fortunate enough in green are from Halloran Recreation Center. Uh, they're coached by uh, Kurt Grenick. And at Stella Walsh is in orange. They're over in the Slavic Village area of Cleveland. Uh, they're coached by Mike Penner. What age group are we talking about here, Tim? Well, the teenagers are 15 and 16 years old. The cutoff date was August 1st. Some of the rules that we had were mandatory play. You know, we looked at participants' rights, kids playing. This is what it's all about. They're being taught fundamentals. They're playing. They live in the city, and every kid must play. Um, when we look at the teams, Joe, uh, they're very similar. And really, the coaches kind of, we talked to them before the game and said, hey, what are some of the things that you feel? And they think alike. Both of them said the key is going to be our catchers. Who's going to block the ball? We're playing with a big backstop. We're not used to this all year. That could be pass balls, could play a big role. As well as the pitchers, two outstanding pitchers, Mike Farrar from Stella Walsh and Anthony Wolford from Halloran. Both power pitchers, throw fastball, curveball. They claim they throw a slider. I don't know if they do it this year, but they, they both racked up some numbers with strikeouts coming into the game. As well as when I talk to them, I says, hey, what are some of the other keys that we look at besides the pitcher and catchers, of course, in baseball? And they talked about defense, the infield defense. Stella Walsh feels if they play good defense in the middle of the diamond, they're going to win. Halloran, on the other hand, I think Coach Grenick said, look, our guy's strong. I'm going to load up the right side of the infield, play strong defense right there, and see if that'll pay off for us. Tim, have these teams played each other previously this year? Yes, they have. Uh, the first time they met, it was a one, uh, it was a seven to three win. Halloran won, and again, the winning pitcher, Anthony Wolford. And the second time they met, it was a part of a doubleheader. Wolford had a no hitter going into the six, loses in an unearned runs, four to three. Second game, no pitching, 11 to two. It was all Stella Walsh. So Stella Walsh has won two out of three. But both aces are going, both are rested, both teams are healthy. We should have a great ball game. We've also got a great ballpark here. This is an outstanding facility. Yeah, Gordon Park has uh, really been upgraded by the city of Cleveland. A lean conjunction a lot with Cleveland State University. They play their games here. And they really, uh, really did a real effort by the city in the park maintenance to try to make it happen. You've uh, mentioned the coaches' names. Uh, tell us a little bit more about them. Well, when you talk about homebred and really going through the ranks, nobody else fits that better than Mike Penner from Stella Walsh. 
Mike is uh, 19 years old. Uh, he played in Class F. He played through the Mickey Mantle. He also was in the state tournament as a youngster as a player in Mickey Mantle and Connie Mack. So he's played the route and he knows the kids in the area. He's, he's lived in that area so he knows them. And he also is a sophomore at the University of Dayton. Bright kid. Has a point guard uh, grade average of 3.76. So even though he's young, he's brilliant at the game. And his philosophy has been, hey, let's play solid defense. But we're going to force the other team to make mistakes. We're going to hit and run. We're going to execute. And we're going to be aggressive with the bat and on the bases. On the other hand, you have Kurt Grenick. He, uh, Kurt is 28 years old, been involved with Class A. He's kind of played on the sandlot for years. He's also been involved in championships. I personally know Kurt from playing with us in the adult baseball league here in Cleveland. And Kurt also has done some high school coaching in the basketball arena over at St. Edwards as the freshman basketball coach this year. He's really come on and enjoyed this program, and he's been a big asset as far as teaching the fundamentals. So there you have it. The stage is set for this uh, Mickey Mantle League Championship as these two teams battled ahead for the state round at Youngstown. Beautiful day for baseball at Gordon Park, and we'll be back with the lineups right after this timeout. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. All right, back here at Gordon Park prior to the Mickey Mantle League Championship game. Let's go to field announcer and league director Nate Mumphrey for the introduction of the two ball clubs this afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our annual Mickey Mantle Baseball Championship game, sponsored by the Cleveland Division of Recreation, the Cleveland Baseball Federation, and the Cleveland Indians. Today's game features the Stella Walsh Recreation Team against the Halloran Recreation Team. And now, I will introduce the Halloran Team. The head coach, Kirch Butch Grinick. Assistant coach, Mike Hangs. And now the players. Number two, pitcher, outfielder, John Crawford. Number 16, infielder, Dan Guyon. Number 19, pitcher, outfielder, Dennis Cusell. Number 10, center field, Steve Leahy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our starting lineup. Batting in the number one slot. Number nine, the catcher, Danny Bowl. Number two hitter. Number four, David Bowl, the shortstop. Adding third and playing third base. Number 20, Kyle Hine. Adding in the cleanup spot, the first baseman, number 18, Pat Cookin. Adding fifth, number 14, the pitcher, Anthony Wilford. Number eight, the second baseman, Adam Schneider. Number 17, the left fielder, Brian Zima. Number 12, the right fielder, Eugene Ball. And number 15, and playing center field, Nicholas Coniglia. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Halloran Recreation Mickey Mantle baseball team. And now, introducing the team from Stella Walsh. Head coach, Mike Penner. Assistant coach, Jim Clark. Now the players. Number 17, pitcher outfielder, Timmy Baker. Number 19, pitcher outfielder, Joe Barton. Number six, outfielder, Nick Kubik. Number seven, first baseman outfielder, Mike Stucco. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineup. 
Leading off and playing third base, number 15, Elvis Serrano. Batting second, playing center field, number five, Rob Worrell. Batting third and playing second, number 11, Mike Worman. Hitting in the cleanup spot. Playing shortstop, wearing number 12, Ron Loomer. Batting number five, number 18, the pitcher, Mark Farrar. Number 10, the designated hitter, Lou Senato. Playing first base, wearing number 13, Keith Johnson. Playing right field, wearing number 16, Pete Kozinski. And the catcher, wearing number eight, Mark Stucco. And on defense, playing left field, wearing number 14, Santo Ortiz. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we will have our national anthem sung by the famed Rocco Scotty. Rocco Scotty with the national anthem, and now let's go to Desiree Powell and uh, hear about the coaches' views of their starting pitchers. Here with Coach Kirk Grenick from Halloran Recreation Center. Am I correct? Right. Okay. What are you going to tell your kids just before they take the field today to start the game? Well, I want them to uh, think about the last couple games we played against uh, Walsh, the mistakes that we did make, and uh, how to correct them today. On the defensive end, we want to play tough, uh, not make too many mistakes throwing the ball around. And on offense, we're going to want to uh, convert, make the most of our opportunities. Okay, well, good luck for today's game. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Next, we're going to have the next coach. You can go ahead. Good luck. Mike Penner, correct, from Stella Walsh Recreation Center. How are you today? Pretty good. Right? Well, good. What we'd like to ask you first is, who is your starting pitcher for today, and what type of pitches can we expect from him today? Um, he's Mark Farrar, and he'll challenge every hitter with a uh, good slider, tight curveball, and he'll try to put him away with a fastball. All right. Okay, he's, so he's pretty consistent then, in other words. Yes. yes. Okay. Throws a lot of strikes. A lot of strikes. Yes. <laughs> you hope today, anyway, right? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, how did your practice go today? Did you get a lot of practice time in? I know it rained earlier in the week and whatnot, but did you get enough practice time? Yeah, we, we, pla we practiced Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, we took them to the cages, and they seemed ready. Everyone showed up, and they're okay. excited to play. How about your, your, your team? Are they all healthy? Will you have to be held back by any injuries or anything like that? No, everybody's healthy. Everyone's 
Minnesota. Yes. Okay. One last thing. What are you going to say to your kids before they take the field to give them that extra motivation to, to get a win today? I'm going to tell them to relax, to work hard, um, play with class, and play baseball like they know how, and they'll be fine. Okay. Well, good luck this afternoon. You have a good game. You too. Bye-bye. Back to you, Tim. All right, now we go to the ceremonial first pitch thrown by Ralph Veron. And again, Ralph is the president of the Cleveland Baseball Federation, who's been the key member to put this league together this year. All right, Tim Wells, how about the umpires for today's ball game? Well, as we look at our umpires, again, we're talking a lot of experience. On the left-hand side is Mike Credo. He's 20 years experience as an umpire. He's a graduate of St. Joe. In the center will be the guy calling the balls and strikes today, Gary Heschel, four-year umpire, a graduate of Rhodes, played on the Class A Diamonds here in, in Cleveland as a player for many years. And on the right is Jesse Harvey. He'll be umpiring over at first base. Again, 21 years as an umpire. He also is a school teacher for 29 years right here at the Cleveland Public Schools at Thomas Jefferson Junior High. Well, taking a look at the defensive lineup for the Stella Walsh team at uh, first base, Keith Johnson, the second base, Mike Werman. The shortstop will be Ron Loomer, third base, Elvis Serrano. In left field, Sato Ortiz, the center fielder, Rob Worrell, and the right fielder will be Pete Kosinski. Catching will be Mike Stucco, and pitching will be Mark Farrar. So we're just about ready to go, Tim, and uh, as we have seen in other sports that you and I have telecast in the past, uh, we're probably in for a pretty good afternoon of competition. Yeah, we're looking at two outstanding ball teams, and again, to get here to play for the city championship, it's not only just been the talent, but maybe the bounce of the ball or the luck to go your way. We've got sunshine and about 78 degrees here at Gordon Park on this Saturday afternoon for the Mickey Mantle championship victory, our championship game. So we look at number 18, Mark Farrar. He's going to be the pitcher for Stella Walsh today. Comes in with some outstanding statistics as far as Racking up some strikeouts. The last three ball games, he's picked up a period of 25 strikeouts. Throws a fastball. Coach mentioned earlier in the pregame, curveball. Again, uh, he's a little bit different than Wilford in the sense that his curveball is a hard breaking curveball. It's at the same speed. It's a little bit tougher to handle. Well, Dan Bowl, David Bowl, and Kyle Hine will be the first three batters for Halloran today to deal with Mike Ferrar. In the playoffs, Stella Walsh beat Kovacic 12 to 1, while Halloran knocked off Glenville 14 to 9 and Cadell 10 to nothing. And the throw down to second base, and this ball game is about to begin. Leading off for Halloran. Kurt Grenick goes down to coach at third, and Mike Hines is coaching at first base. Danny Bowl. Here's Dan Bowl. 5'5, 130 pounds. He hit 529 during the year and an even 500 against Stella Walsh. All one. Ball too. You can ask for a better afternoon for baseball here today at Gordon Park. Sunshine, a bit of a breeze, appears to be wafting across the outfield. Ball slapped to third. And the throw across by Elvis Serrano. One out. Well, one of the keys, Joe, when we talked to the coaches before the game, they felt that the early part of the ball game was going to be key. And especially for Halloran, they, they, they indicated to us that they wanted to stay close or get ahead early. 
with Stella Walsh's hitting ability that they felt that they fell behind, and they probably got over the first hump with that first hitter. David Bald is next, 5'6", 148 pounds, a 391 batter. Yes, Joe, they are twin brothers. A little rivalry between the two. Whoops, he went fishing for the high one that time. Two strikes. They do have some dissimilarities. For instance, Danny's favorite team, the Indians, with Kenny Lofton, his favorite player, and David, the Braves, with Fred McGriff. <laughs> Showing that we're in the television age. Strike three, and David Bowl becomes the second out of the first inning. Well, we can see here that uh, Ferraris relied on the changeup. Again, Halloran, a fastball hitting team. He's throwing the ball up high and got him to chase pitches that they went, didn't want to go after. Number three hitter, Halloran. Third Kyle base, Hine is number Kyle three in the Halloran order, the third baseman. He's 6'1", 190, a 370 batter from John Marshall. Like most of these fellows are from John Marshall. There are some that are not, and we'll pick them up as the afternoon wears along. And many of the John Marshall players that are on this team back on May 25th were here playing for the city Cleveland Public Schools Championship, and Kyle is one of them. Strike one pitch. Strike two. Two outs. Nobody on. We're in the top of the first inning. Well, he swung and missed, but the ball goes all the way back to the screen, and that's what you were talking about of the pregame, Tim, with this spacious area behind home plate. A catcher that can't at least knock down a ball is liable to have to take a long trip. Well, the coaches, both coaches agree that that would be a factor, and again, the, the first strikeout that, are, that cost him was a pass ball. But again, Kyle Hine on first base doesn't have a lot of speed. Well, he struck out on a pitch at the dirt, so it's a strikeout and a wild pitch, and it brings up Pat Cacone, the first baseman. Strike one. We're going 5'10", 151, a 407 batter during the uh, season, but he was only two for eight against the Stella Walsh pitching. Strike one pitch, one on one. Stella Walsh rec center in the orange and Halloran in the green in this Mickey Mantle League championship game. Two and one. Stella Walsh during the season went nine and one. Halloran went seven and four. The only loss that Stella Walsh encountered was against Haller. Three and one. Well, the first two batters were easy on a bouncer to third and a swinging strike three. Then Kyle Hines struck out on a ball that was in the dirt, arrived safely at first base when the pitch eluded the catcher. Now Cacone batting. Anthony Wolford due to bat next. A walk. Well, again, you can see that this is the first time he's pitched from the stretch. Seems to be kind of crouched when he's starting, and it might be caused some of the inconsistency. Again, Mark Ferrar, the coach, had told us uh, before the game when he talked to Desiree about, you know, he was concerned about getting ahead of the hitters. Anthony Wolford is the opposing pitcher for Mike Ferrar today. Ball one, two on, two out. Wilford, it's 5'9", 160, a 428 batter, three for eight against Stella Walsh. And he dealt him one high and tight, failed to find it, one won the count. I'll tell you folks watching us here this afternoon, NBC, ABC, CBS, 
ESPN Sports Channel. They've got nothing on Tim Wells. This man <laughs> provides more information than anyone I have ever seen at any level of broadcasting. Ball is hammered foul. One and two. Well, during the year, Anthony Wolford has showed the potential to hit the ball a long way. And I'm sure uh, Coach Granick has given him the green light because of the potential for him to possibly hit an extra base hit. But as we can see, the, the uh, Stella Walsh defense is played back. Well, he got him. And he strikes out the side the hard way by allowing one of the men to arrive safely at first base. So we go for the first half inning. No runs, no hits, a walk, wild pitch, and two left. So at the end of one half inning of play, Halloran nothing. Stella Walsh coming to bat. Let's take a look at the Halloran defense. At first base, Pat Cacone. Second base, Adam Schneider. The third baseman is Kyle Hine and the shortstop, David Bowl. In left field, Brian Zima. The center fielder is Nick Caniglia. Right fielder, Eugene Ball. Catching is Dan Bowl and pitching, Anthony Wilford. Now, something that we might explain, uh, Tim, is that uh, they do have the high school option of using a designated hitter to bat for anybody in the lineup, but. Evidently, uh, the Halloran Ball Club, coached by Kurt Grenig, has decided to forego that, and they're going with nine guys and all of them bat. Right. At the uh, high school reentry rule, as well as the high school lineup rule, is being used here, which basically means that other than the American League, where you can only hit for the pitcher, they can have them bat for any position player that they would like, as long as they determine it at the beginning of the ball game and stay in that spot in the batting order. Likewise, Joe, as we've been wanting to put in mandatory play that everybody gets to play and everybody learns the game, we went with the high school reentry rule. What in essence means is if a youngster that starts the ball game can be taken out of the ball game and replaced by a substitute player, and later in the ball game, the coach has the option to re-enter the starter. And they may only do that once during the game. So a starter can come out of the game and re-enter it, and that is in line with the Ohio High School rule that they use on the sand lines. Again, Joe, when we look at Anthony uh, Wolford and Danny Bowl, you know, when we talked to the kids before the game, they were a little antsy about coming here. Uh, again, back on May 25th, a lot of these kids that play for Halloran played for John Marshall against Lincoln West for the city championship. So really, this is the same battery, pitcher and catcher, that were back here back in May trying to win a city title, and they're hoping that they can do it here today. Yet the home half of the first inning gets underway. It'll be Mike Serrano, the third baseman, leading off for Stella Walsh. Serrano, 5'9", 170, hit 364 during the season. Three and he hit uh, two for eight against Halloran. The win now, his turn starting to blow out. One one. One of the things about Elvis Serrano that we noticed when we looked at him was that he's gonna make the pitcher throw strikes. During their season, he drew over 14 walks. One ball, two strikes. One, two. Now there's a base hit in the left field. Well, Elvis Serrano leads off with a solid single to left field. Now Anthony Wolford's gonna have to be careful here because Serrano will run. He has outstanding speed. He had 16 stolen bases out of 18 attempts this, this past season. Rob Worrell, the center fielder. Ball one. Going into this game, Rob Worrell has been the hottest hitter on the team. The last three ball games, he's hitting over 500. 
He was three for six against Halloran pitching this year. Mike Penner coaching at third, Jim Clark at first. That ball slapped to right field for a base hit. Digging for third and a long throw across. Stops on the infield grass and down to second base on the throw. Goes Rob Borowell, so back to back hits. Runners at second and third and nobody out. Well, as we look at the replay, you see an outside pitch Perfectly hits the other way. That's what you look for in a coach. And here's the mistake on the defense. They overthrow the cutoff. Again, kids are instructed from the outfield, hit the cutoff, get the ball into the shortstop, which moved Warhol into second base and puts him at second and third with nobody out. So now Stella Walsh in a great opportunity to get the uh, first runs of the ball game. Mike Werman, second baseman defensively, He's 5'11", 155, hit 469 in this season. Two for eight against Halloran. Good breaking pitch, strike one. Well, when you look about the player that really makes a team go, this guy's led in four offensive categories, hits, runs scored, RBIs, and home runs. Uh, he was tempted to go for the high fastball, count evens 1-1. Day ball, two and one. Mike Werman at bat. Ron Loomer due to bat next. Two and two. A little anxious, a little anxious, <laughs> Joe. And the 2-2 pitch. Full count. There is no score. We're in the home half of the first inning. The Mickey Mantle League Championship game at Gordon Park in Cleveland. Try three. He painted that outside corner. Again, he did a nice job. He pitched them away. You can see right here as Gary Heschel rings them up for the first out of the inning. Ron Loomer is next. The shortstop, 5'8", 165, a 455 batter. Three for eight against Halloween. Ball one. Runners at second and third, one out. Serrano at third, Borrell at second. Back to back hits to start the ball game for Stella Walsh. Tipped into the catcher's mitt to even the count at one and one. Again, Loomer's been consistent all year at the plate, has hit safely in nine of the 11 games this season. Breaking ball, takes the count to two and one. Again, Joe, you can see that the, the pitcher seems to believe that he can get Loomer out by pitching him away on the outside corner. Stella Walsh likes to pull the ball. Three and one. Mike Farrar, the Stella Walsh pitcher, is due to bat next. Here's the three one pitch. The bases are loaded. Mike pitcher. or Mark Farrar, the pitcher. 5-5-1-30-3-87 batter was two for seven against Halloran. Strike one. 
Bases loaded, one out. We're in the home half of the first inning. One one. You know, Joe, when we talked to the kids before the game, we asked them about their favorite player. Mike Berhar says, listen, I got two of them. When I'm hitting, I think like Albert Bell, and when I'm pitching, I think like Charlie Nagy. Breaking ball inside, two and one. You look at a pitcher's delight, come up, bases loaded, one out. Chance to help yourself. Yeah, you help your own cause, to say the least. Two one pitch. Three and one, no place to put him. Bases loaded. Lou Sonato is due to bat next. He walked him to force in a run. So Farrar gets an RBI. The bases remain loaded. And the DH is Lou Sonato. Sonato. 421 batting average for the year, but he was 0 for 7 against Halloran pitching this year. Strike one. One one. Warrell at third, Loomer at second, Ferrar at first. One out. Home half of the first inning. Stella Walsh batting against Halloran and leading one to nothing. Ball rammed right up the middle into center field. It'll score a pair. Racing around to third base on the hit was Ferrar, and it's now a three to nothing ball game. Well, again, you can see that the pitcher came in and challenged him, Joe. Again, Stella Walsh is a fastball hitting team like Halloran. As we look at the replay here, you can see a nice fastball right over the heart of the plate. Kept his head down. And again, this time you have to give the center fielder credit Realizing he didn't have the guy at 30, ends up throwing the ball into second base, prevent the runner from moving into second on. So it's a three to nothing lead for Stella Walsh and Keith Johnson, who was at home plate, is now summoned down to the third base coach. Mike Penner wants to give him a word. Keith Johnson hitting 091 during the regular season on just one for eleven. Here goes the runner from first to second without a throw. And a ball and a strike. Seems like he's not opening his hips on his uh, off speed pitch. He's not following through. Kind of leaves it out there. Well, he dropped that a curveball in there beautifully, and the count is one and two. Still only one out. Stella Walsh has scored three times here in the first inning. Two balls, two strikes. And the payoff pitch. 3 2 count. They're popping balls and strikes up on that scoreboard faster than they could throw them. So now it's 3 and 2. Runners at second and third. And 
He got him on an inside pitch for the second strikeout and out of the inning. Two down. And the next batter is Pete Kozinski, the right fielder. Well, you see here, it was a nice down and in pitch. Kozinski, six feet even, 180 pounds. Strike one the count. Anthony Wolford trying to pitch out of trouble here in the first inning. His breaking pitch outside, one and one. And again, when you're looking at pitching and you're talking off-speed pitching compared to just a simple breaking ball, it's a big advantage if you can learn to throw that off-speed pitch. Two balls and a strike. Home half of the first inning, three to nothing. Stella Walsh leads. Here comes the man to the plate. He is a dead duck trying to steal home plate as the Halloran catcher, Dan Bold, was waiting for him. In the inning, three runs on a total of three base hits. And at the end of the first inning of play, Stella Walsh leads three to nothing. Back here at Gordon Park, let's take a look at the final out of the first inning, Tim. Well, we can see here that apparently they were trying to create, Mike Pinner talked about aggressive base running, and right here the catcher, nice catch, nice tag, gets out, shows it to the ump, good call. And I'm sure uh, Coach Penner was trying to create, again, create some aggressive play on base running. A lot of people will question it, but that's their style of play. Adam Schneider, Brian Zima, and Eugene Ball will be the first three in the second inning for Halloran and Ball one from Michael Mark Ferraro who has been spotted a three nothing lead. Well, when we compared the pitchers in the first inning, Wolford 36 pitches, 15 for strikes. Compared to Ferraro, 18 pitches, 11 for strikes. I'm sure Halloran is going to go out there with the same philosophy. Hey, we got a tight strike zone. We're going to take some pitches, make them throw it to us. He bunts. It's on the dirt. It stays fair and safe at first is the throw to the inside of the bag by the Stella Walsh catcher, Mike Stucco, pulled first baseman Keith Johnson off the bag. It's an error. And I'm looking here at the replay, and I see he went by him, and I see the safe call, but apparently, and again, we'll probably have to find out from the officials, he turned around. They now ref they're reversing the call to an out. Well, because of interference, running inside the... Uh, base path so you can uh, make it a one out situation well you guys always do things in a big way you're going to put a helicopter down here <laughs> so there is one out on interference on the base paths by Adam Schneider That one into left field, and on at first base is Brian Zima. That is the first hit of the ball game for Halloran. Again, Brian Zima's favorite player, Ken Griffey. You'll see a little bit of uh, Ken Griffey here, I guess, when you look at nice bat, keeps his head down. Number 12, Eugene Ball. 
See the pitch here. Good job. Kept his head down. Went with the pitch. Hit it the other way. Eugene Ball, the right fielder at bat. Strike one. One of the things that impressed me about the Halloran team is that they don't like to pull the outside pitch. Coach has been stressing them to go the other way with the outside pitch and it seemed to help them. Steve right two. Eugene Ball. 6'2", 220. Pounds that one right back to the pitcher. Throw out to second base. They'll put the tag on the sliding base runner, Brian Zima, for the fielder's choice. Now, again, Joe, as you saw there, it was a ground ball hit back to the pitcher. We talked about communication, and I'm sure that Ferrara said to the second baseman, the shortstop, hey, right here, I need to know who I'm going back to. So if we're playing baseball and we're learning the techniques, this should be communicated. You see here, he kind of looked to the shortstop, then he ends up throwing to the second baseman. Again, Brian Zima doesn't have the tremendous speed, so they get the out. But again, pitchers should be instructed, hey, you get a guy on first base, talk to the middle infielders. Who's got the ball if it's hit back to me? Nick Conigli is the batter, 5'9", 150, a 273 batter during the season. And he got caught in a tweener there. He held the bat out, and the ball hit the bat and went out of play. Two strikes. Conigli, number nine man in the Halloran batting order. We're in the second inning, top half thereof, and there is a 3 to nothing Stella Walsh lead in this game. One and two, good stop by the Stella Walsh catcher, Mike Stucco. Want to practice those at every opportunity, even when they don't mean anything, because you're going to be called upon, as we've already seen, to stop ones that do. Well, that takes care of the batter, Nick Coniglia, and takes care of Halloran in the second inning. No runs with a base hit, and a man left at the end of two innings of play. It is three to nothing in favor of Stella Walsh. Well, as we look here again, we talk about the Mickey Mantle League. You see a lot of the parents as well as friends have come out to support their teams. And you know, we just talked to Ralph Vera last inning about the Cleveland Baseball Federation and how they've come together. You know, we've looked at the Cleveland baseball program as a whole and we found out that youngsters we're allowed to play free baseball up to the age of 14. Well, Ralph Vera, with the support of the, the Board of Directors, the Cleveland Indians, the Gunn Foundation, stepped forward so that the city of Cleveland youngsters can now go up from the ages all the way up through 16 to play baseball free. A lot of the kids that we see here today play in our Cleveland public schools right here in the city of Cleveland. And I see one of the things that we now see is that they say baseball is growing. Well, in the city of Cleveland, Joe, just being in organized sports, I know all our diamonds are tied up with baseball fields. And we see here today just a few of the kids, but over 130 youngsters, teenagers, that live in the city of Cleveland were given an opportunity to play baseball free of charge. So our hats have to go off to the Cleveland Indians, the Gun Foundation, as well as the Cleveland Baseball Federation. That is outstanding. Pete Kozinski was at bat when Mike Ferrar, Mark Ferrar was out trying to steal home in the first inning. Strike one. Steve right two. Anthony Wolford staggered through a three run first inning. Struck out two, walked a couple. And that one goes right back to the screen. One and two. Two and two. Steve, right three. Kozinski. 
strikeout victim. That'll bring on the number nine batter. Mike Stucco, the catcher. Watch Wilford strike out Kosinski. Well, this is the twin brother, Mark. They ran another twin in on me, huh? <laughs> And Mark's had a pretty good year with baseball. He was all league in the Cleveland Senate this year. So Mark Stucco is 16 years of age, 5'7", 145, 1 for 14 overall, 0 for 7 in batting against Halloran. Ball two. Well, I tell you, the catchers are going to have a busy, busy day here. You know, I I saw the umpire's expression like, kid, listen, anything down there, you're supposed to protect me. Don't let it hit me. <laughs> There's a strike three one. And, you know, Joe, I used to, when I coached, I used to tell my catchers, you're going to keep getting them in the dirt as long as you let them throw them there. After the first or second one, you better get out there and tell them, hey, you throw it up here. An outstanding pitch and a 3 2 count. Full count, one out, second inning, three to nothing. Stella Walsh leading and at bat. Stella Walsh, the team in the orange jerseys. Ball in the air out over the second baseman, first baseman back as the wind gives it a bit of a ride, and Pat Cacone stayed with it for the put out. Two down. Well, you can see Anthony you know, Wilford starting to gain a little confidence, get ahead of the hitters. Showed the ability to come back when he was behind that hitter. Top of the order, Elvis Serrano. Serrano singled to start a three-run rally in the first inning. He eventually scored on a bases-loaded walk. Strike one. Two down, nobody on. Serrano and Worrell singled to start the first inning for Stella Walsh. And two walks brought a run. There's the 1-1 pitch. And then Luis Serrano drove in a pair. That ball, they's pounded by the shortstop into left center field. Serrano has the fourth Stella Walsh hit of the afternoon. It comes with two outs in the second inning. Well, as we look at the replay again, we see him pitching, pitching him away. And again, Stella Walsh trying to pull it, gets a ground ball, punches it up through the middle. Second hit for Elvis Serrano. Again, has outstanding speed. So they'll need to keep him close. Worrell the batter. Good breaking ball. Strike one. Worrell singled. Went to second on a throw. It eventually scored on Sonato's base hit back of the first inning. And Serrano back to first base. Anthony Wilford pitching for Halloran this afternoon in this championship game opposed by Mark Farrar. He went fishing and the throw is in the center field and picking himself up going to third is Serrano. They may send him, no. Put the brakes on as the center fielder recovers the air and throw so it will be a stolen base and a throwing error. Well, that's the style of play that Mike Penner was talking about Hey, we're going we're gonna to run. We may run into some outs, or we're going to create some havoc. And right here you see Dan Bull, who really does have a nice, strong arm, although he lets this one get away from him. And again, you can see here, Serrano looks, sees it's up, and he's taken off. Meanwhile, Morrell pounds the ball to third. The throw across in time by Kyle Hine. And there's no damage done. No runs. A hit. And an error and a runner left. So we have played two innings 
here at the Gordon Park. And it is still a three to nothing lead, Tim. Well, after two innings of play, Joe, you're right. We got Stella Walsh up 3-0. And you know, what? one of the things is we're going to be uh, meeting one of the umpires, and we talk about the umpiring profession and the, the, the men in blue. Uh, later on, I'm sure that we're going to catch up with one of the umpires to hear about what they go through during the summer. We look here at uh, not just the Mickey Mantle baseball program, but, but I'm sure a lot of our viewers here in Cleveland are, are thinking about, hey, how do I get my kid involved in baseball this summer? Where do I join? Well, what they need to do is call the Cleveland Baseball Federation at 861-4767. There's programs for the tots all the way from the ages of four years old all the way through adults, as well as they can contact maybe their local recreation center where there's baseball programs going on in all levels, um, as well as the Cleveland Recreation Department is looking not just on the boys' side, the adult side, but the girls. We're going to have a girls' softball program next spring where the girls will be able to get involved and, and get involved and get their wax at it. Well, in the third inning for Halloran, it will be Bowl, Bowl, and Hines. Sounds like a vaudeville act, but it's actually the catcher, shortstop, and third baseman for Halloran Rec. Dan Bowl bounced to third to start the ball game for Halloran. Here's Mark Ferrar's first pitch. Ball one. Top of the order. Catcher number nine, Danny Bowl. Danny Bowl, he's a tough kid. Hard-nosed catcher. You'd better be hard-nosed if you're going to catch in this league. And there's why. <laughs> Ball two. You better be hard all over. Not just the nose, but all portions of your anatomy better be like granite. Because you don't know uh, sometimes where those pitches are coming. Slaps that one back to the second baseman in time at first. Adam Schneider makes the play, and that will see I'm getting a side miss. Oh, here we are. One out, third inning. Little frustration by Dan. Now let me get the right second baseman in there, Mike Werman. One out. Now David Bowl, his twin brother, a strikeout victim in the first inning, reaches out, tags one up around his eyes, slaps it to the left fielder, and without any real problem, Santo Ortiz makes the grab. Two down. Look at Santo Ortiz. He's a good example of a kid that just started playing baseball in our Class F program. Now is up here and playing in the Mickey Mantle League, and again, this is the kind of the league that's for us for kids in Cleveland wanting to learn fundamentals getting a chance to go out and play some baseball Kyle Hine batting with two outs with nobody on as he did in the first inning he struck out but arrived safely on a wild pitch this time he is nailed at first base on the pro by Mike Wehrman and Mark Ferrar goes through a very neat one, two, three, third inning. We've played two and a half at Gordon Park. Stella Walsh, three. And the Halloran Rec team, nothing, as we check out the replay of the work by the second baseman, Tim. Mark Ferrar was looking for the perfect inning. You get those short innings, few pitches, threw a little breaking ball away from Kyle Hine. And again, Kyle with not the outstanding speed, plenty of time. First baseman stayed with it. Did a nice job at first base was Keith Johnson. Again, we look at the Stella Walsh team in their dugout. They're over by South High School in the old Slavic Village area. Their center manager, Marty Pizak, I'm sure is rooting for him today. As well as, Joe, the winning team. Maybe for our viewers, just to remind the winning team will be representing Cleveland, Ohio in the state tournament later at the end of this month of July. So there's a lot at stake for the kids today. I believe they play that over in Youngstown, don't they, Tim? Right, Youngstown, Ohio. The teams from Akron, Canton. 
You can see here Anthony Wolford warming up. And again, Joe, it seems like as the game's gone on, he's got a little stronger, a little bit more confident. Seems to get the, found the strike zone. Well, he'll have to deal with the three, four, and five batters in the Stella Walsh lineup. Mike Werman, Ron Loomer, and Mark Farrar. These fellows, uh, with the exception of Werman, who was a strikeout victim, Loomer and Farrar figured prominently into the three-run rally in the first inning by Stella Walsh. They figured into it by standing there and taking ball four. Second base with three eleven. One to load the bases and one to bring home a run. And then Luis Sonato came along and spanked a base hit to center field to drive in two. The curve ball, ball one to Mike Wehrman. He was called out on strikes in the first inning. Two. And we talk a lot about baseball, but when you look at Mike Werman, he's been a merit roll student. He'll be entering the 11th grade at Trinity High School. There's a strike two and one. Oh, you love those umpires that have that low strike when yes. you're a pitcher. Two one pitch. And one. Wind picking up here at Gordon Park. It was just a bit of a breeze when we started the ball game, but now it has started to really start to blow across the outfield from left to right. But all in all, just a delightful day here. Ball pounded at the plate foul. Three and two. comes Wilford's 3-2 pitch. That one is hammered up the middle. Second baseman throwing. Not in time. Well, Adam Schneider let the ball come to him, and it took long enough to allow Mike Werman a chance to beat it out. And Joe, when, you, when you're looking at playing defense, if you're not going to charge the ball, you better move in and position yourself when you have guys with good speed. Left-hand batters have one less stop, and that was the difference here. Again, you see Adam sitting back on the ball, makes a nice throw, but clearly you can see that umpire Jesse Harvey made the correct call. Ron Loomer is the batter. He walked, scored at the first inning. Slams that one foul. Making both Tim and I very happy. We are sitting behind a very strong fence. <laughs> I think this is a big inning for Anthony Wolford as far as confidence. You got the heart of their order up. Get that first guy on now. He's got to hang tough in here and see if he can keep his team close. Nice pitch. One and two. Throws a nice fastball. Moves it in and out. We're in the home half of the third inning. Stella Walsh at bat and leading three to nothing. Well, that's all for Ron Loomer. Wilford with his fourth strikeout. Each pitcher is fanned four. Well, again, Joe, we talked about Hitting the outside pitch the other way. Here it was, high and out. You can see he kind of stepped out like he wanted to pull it. Pitcher number 18, Mark. Mark Ferrar slaps one into center field. That's a base hit. And the ball gets by the center fielder, and that is going to allow Mike Werman to come all the way around to score. And now Ferrar is headed for third, and he is going to make it safely. Now that is a costly error. Ferrar with the single to center field. And then the center fielder couldn't handle it. And that led to a run. And again, we're looking at Nick Cliniglia come in here, pick up the ball. 
And again, didn't get the glove down, didn't center, and he knew it right away. Foul out of play off the bat of Luis Sonata, who drove in two runs with a base hit in the first inning. Halloran's second error of the afternoon. One one pitch. Two and one. Now here's one of those times where the coaches were talking about the catchers. Here you got a man on third base. Less than two outs. Danny Bull's gonna have to work extra hard to make sure he keeps everything in front of him. Ball is nubbed over the mound. Second baseman, no chance, and then he threw the ball away. The run is scored. Down to second base goes Sonato. Base hit, error, an RBI, and it is now five to nothing. Again, we talked about defense, and again, Coach Grenick said, we're gonna have to play defense on the right side. This time, Schneider charges it, but again, the speed of Stella Walsh. I'm sure Mike Penner right now has gotta be feeling pretty good. We wanted to attack him with the bats as well as use our speed, cause an aggressive play, both hitting and running with, running the bases, and that's exactly what's happened here so far today. Five to nothing, the score. Sonato out at second base, and Keith Johnson has struck out to end the first inning, comes to bat with one out, two runs home here in the third. And we've got the pickoff play on at second base, and the ball gets away from the shortstop, David Bowl, and that will send Sonato over to third base. So at the moment, anyway, Tim, the fellas from Halloran are having problems of uh, a multitude. Hits by Stella Walsh, errors. Well, one of the things Mike Penner told me was a concern of his was, hey, this guy's a strikeout pitcher. We need to put the ball in play. And I really believe if we put the ball in play, we can create some runs. and. and uh, Coach Grenick from Halloran says, "Look, we got to play good defense." And what's happened is they're not be, they're not able to pick up the ground balls. And right now, I got to believe that Halloran is going to have to look to to play the infield in a little bit and see if they cut off some of these runs. Another ball, two and zero. Oh. Sonata with third base. He's driven in three runs this afternoon with a pair of base hits. And another throw by Wilford that is well off the mark and trotting home is Sonato. Six to nothing. Two and one the count. Still only one out. And the ball to make it a three and one. A three run first for Stella Walsh and three more here in the third. And they walk issued to Keith Johnson. Wilford now struck out four and walked three. Right field, 16, Pete Kozinski. Pete Kozinski. Slaps that one back to Knigley, the second baseman, and the throw eludes the shortstop covering. Everybody's safe. Well, 
Well, Kozinski is on. Well, again, you see here, now this is the outside pitch. He, this time he tries to hit it to right, and again, it was a good throw. Shortstop kind of pulled off like he was getting ready to throw the double play. Want to catch the ball first, get the first out. And the number nine batter, Mark Stucco, coming to bat. And there's still only one out of the inning. Foul strike. Six to nothing. Stella Walsh leads. There's a strike. Strike two. Truthfully, Joe, if someone just walked into this ball game at six nothing, you say, "Oh my!" But Wolford has not pitched that bad of baseball today. Now, and unfortunately, Tim, he's at that point with the way things have gone behind him that every time somebody hits the ball, he has to hold his breath as to wondering what's going to happen next. Although he is in a way contributed with some throwing errors trying to pick a man off at second and trying to pick a man off at third both resulted in advances and runs two two pitch ball rolled to the shortstop a long throw on a bounce and right by the first baseman Pat Cacone, that scores a run. Puts runners at second and third. It's seven to nothing. Do they have a mercy uh, run rule in the uh, championship game? In the Mickey Mantle League? Well, we do have it during the regular season. Uh, with the championship game, I said, don't worry, guys. We're going to have two great teams. It ain't going to happen. But you can see here in the hole, long throw, bad short uh Short hop goes right over the first baseman's glove. Top of the lineup. Third baseman, 15. Over Serrano. You know, and as a coach, there's not really too much you can do, you know? Nope, that's for sure. You get one of these afternoons, you just tie in your helmet and hope nobody gets hurt. Six errors now for Halloran. Seven to nothing. Somebody told me a long time ago, when you look at baseball, it's a real simple game. You got to catch it, you got to hit it, and you got to throw it. And right now, everything that Halloran's doing, they're, they're not doing either, any of those well. There's one back to the screen, and the play at the plate, they got him. Good hustle by the Halloran catcher, Danny Bowl, who went back, picked up that ball, and fired it to Wilford for the second out of the inning. Well, here again, you can see it's a wild pitch, but give Danny Bull credit. He hustled, Wilford came down, nice play. Again, umpire right on top of the play, good call. Back to the top of the order, Serrano. Serrano is two for two with an RBI. And he takes a quick trip down to first base. Two outs. And Rob Worrell, the ninth man to bat in the inning. Number five, the center fielder. Stucco at third, Serrano at first, and Rorwell went fishing for a high outside pitch, strike one. I used to ask my guys that, hey, you swung at the pitch high, why do you keep hitting yourself on the head? He says, hey, coach, just letting you know I know before you say anything. Yeah. 
Runner going. The breaking ball evens the count at one and one. Stella Walsh is batted around here in the third inning. Two and one. Stucco at third, Serrano at second. And the 2 1 pitch to Rob Worrell. 2 2. Full count. Wilford's given up seven runs, only three of them earned. Spanks that one into center field. That'll drop for a base hit and plate two more. It's nine to nothing. with a two run single to center field. Well both times we looked at Rob Royale come up and hit again Joe when you look at this age group and you see a kid hit the ball to right field for a hit with an outside pitch the next time you see him take the ball up the middle you now all kids today can hit the ball to their own field so when you're starting to hit the ball up the middle taking, taking the outside the pitch the other way and it tells you he's got the art of hitting down. He's got a, a good fundamental beginning. Well, here's Mike Wehrman, the tenth man to bat in the inning. Nine to nothing is the score. What is the normal mercy rule? Ten runs after five full innings of play. Okay. Well, we are. We could well be premature. It's 9 nothing now, but there's still a couple of innings to go. 1-1 the count. Werman today is struck out and single. Scored a run. He led off the third inning. 2-1. You really got a feel for Anthony Wilford. He's a good young pitcher, and he's just involved in one of those afternoons where everything has gone wrong. But in the long run, Joe, he'll chalk this up as experience. He'll grow from it, and he'll learn to deal with the tough times. There's one that eludes the catcher and down to second base. Those were well. 3 1 count. Well, at second of the pass, ball. Two outs. Ball chopped on the first base side and right on through into right field. Scoring easily was Worrell. That's the second hit of the inning for Werman. Again, you can see here he pulls a little outside pitch for a ground ball, and the second baseman was over playing toward the middle. He's able that ball to go through. Shortstop number 12, Ron Luger. So it's a 10 to nothing ball game. And Loomer looks at a strike. He has walked and struck out. Scored a run. This is a seven run third inning for Stella Walsh. The curve ball, nope, the throw to second base. Gets through and over to third base. Goes Mike Werman with a stolen base and an error. Yeah. 
High fly ball to right field. Waiting for it to come down. The right fielder, Eugene Ball, and the side is mercifully retired. Seven runs and a total of one, two, three, four, five, six base hits, three errors, and a man left. Hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you eat stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. All right, Tim Wells, it's the fourth inning, and it's 10 to nothing in favor of Stella Walsh. I think I caught the big guy speechless. Well, I have to tell you this, Joe. <laughs> Some of we were talking in the office. We saw this going to be a game either way. But, you know, Halloran is, is a lot better team, and I'm sure they're going to come back here and show it. Elka Cohn starts it off for Halloran in the fourth inning by beating out a base hit. That is only their second hit of the ball game. Now you know this guy is just itching. Anthony Wolford just itching to do something with this bat. Wolford struck out to win the first inning. And he looks at the curveball, strike one. Fourth inning, 10 to nothing. Now, Wilford, obviously a very frustrated man this afternoon. He has been pitching and wading through a minefield. First base, diving back is Cocon. Pop up, shortstop calling for the ball. They got the runner all the way down at second. They can double him up, and the shortstop dropped the ball. He was so eager to make the catch and throw back to first base that he dropped the ball. Everybody's safe, and the runner, Cocon, diving back into first base, is shaken up. Well, again, Joe, you can see here, the runner was going on the pitch. It was a hit and run that was called. And again, he did everything proper. I mean, the team's screaming pop up. He sees the balls up in the air. He has to stop. He has to go back to pop up in the infield. So you, you have to take the out with Cocon. But again, Wolford should be on first base. But again, we're dealing with Hollywood base. I'm sure what it is is he jammed his angle, ankle on the base. See the coach looking at him right now. Well, they tell us that uh, Crawford's going to come in to pitch for Halloran. The pitcher's going to go to left field. Leahy for Schneider. Guyon for Hines. Gazelle for Coniglia with their same spots in the batting order. Guard that paper with your life because <laughs> we lose that. We're not going to know what's going on. They continue to work on the injured ball player, Pat Cacon. Now uh, there's the Stella Walsh fans. It's 10 to nothing in favor of Stella Walsh. We are in the fourth inning of play. The injured player is Pat Cocon, the first baseman for Halloran. And again, Joe, as you look, our, our staff has been trained. We have taken our recreation instructors in the centers as well as the coaches and got them some training in CPR and first aid. So as far as actually handling them, that's why we see the young lady out there, Shelly Brooks, because they've been trained in first aid and CPR to deal with the issues. Looks like a sprained ankle. Get that big 
they were going to take the shoe off and she stepped right in and said keep that shoe on there to keep it tight till we can uh, give him the treatment that he needs which is a very wise idea. Well I'm sure Joe when we looked at the uh, pitching changes if we would have turned around and said that it would be lopsided we'd be shocked especially from the previous matchups between these two teams. But Mike Ferrar has had everything going his way. He's thrown 35 pitches so far. 23 of them have been strikes. He's only thrown 12 balls, 17 of them fastballs. Okay, now we're getting in. Now we're getting into new people, new faces, new numbers. And uh, this is number 10, Steve Leahy. He's batting for Adam Schneider, ball one. ball racing down to second base goes Anthony Wolford in safely. Again Steve Lay is, is going to be entering St. Ignatius High School this fall 11th grader honor roll student. So academically he's been solid. Two and one. Talk about Steve Leahy. You know, the coach had told us, hey, he's going to make the pitcher throw strikes. And even though the, the umpire called that a strike, from the coach's standpoint, you always tell your players, listen, he's going to throw his strikes early in the count sometimes. You look for your pitch. The two one pitch. And he flailed away at an inside offering to even the count of two and two. And that one nub fouled on the first base side. It's a new first baseman over there. Let's check the numbers. Mike Stucco at first base. Did we receive any further communications from Stella Walsh as to changes that they were making? Um, I haven't <laughs> seen anything come through yet, Joe, but I'm sure there's massive. Two two pitch. Full count. Batter is Steve Leahy. Well, I'm going to assume that, uh, and that could be dangerous in this game, <laughs> that Mike Stucco is at first base and that uh, Keith Johnson is out of the lineup. That's all for Steve Leahy. He becomes a strikeout victim for Mike Mark Ferrar. And it was a high and in fastball. You could see he wrote it up, up and in, a little crouch, good location. You can see right now why Mike Farrar is the type of pitcher he's going to get those strikeouts. Moves the ball down, in and out. Brian Zima. Ryan Zima was listed as the left fielder, and then lo and behold, we looked up and he was in right field. And rumor has it he may be coming on to pitch. That's Wilford out at second base. One ball, one strike, two down. Fourth inning, 10 to nothing in favor of Stella Ward or Stella Walsh. Stella Ward was my fourth grade teacher. <laughs> Gee, it was flashback time. Pop. Foul. And the count one and two. Got a nice little crowd here this afternoon. Yeah, good gathering here this afternoon. That's nice. 
bases. Youngsters work as hard as anybody in playing baseball, and it's nice to have them supported by fans, friends, and family. Time called. One ball, two strikes, two outs, fourth inning, 10 to nothing in favor of Stella Walsh. Foul ball. It says here that Kyle Hine is in for Pat Koken. So what they've done is move Kyle Hine from third base over to first base. Yeah. And we'll have a new third baseman in the next inning, Joe. But he stays at his spot on the lineup. Right. He'll stay in the same spot in the batting order. Just move defensively. I'd love to hear Herb score recap this ball game from my <laughs> scorecard. <laughs> One ball, two strikes, two outs. Two and two. Brian Zima is one of the John Marshall players that was here for the city championship. Favorite, favorite player Ken Griffey ready for the 2 2 pitch. Bounds it foul. We're in the fourth inning top of the fourth. Stella Wall scored three in the first and seven in a nightmare third. Comes the 2 2 pitch. Full count. Stay away, stay away. Mark Ferrar. Ready with the 3 2 pitch. Runner is going. The ball tagged to center field. Back to get it. And hauling it in is Rob Worrell. So the inning is over to the tune of no runs and a base hit with a man left. And at the end of three and one half innings of play, Tim Wells, it is still 10 to nothing. Now, I want you to very carefully review and preview all of these multitudinous changes we've got here. Well, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really dirty pool. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's look at some. Uh, we know that uh, Ben Bold is still catching. Now, who's that out of the mound? That's a number two. We haven't seen him yet. That is uh, Johnny Crawford. Johnny Crawford. Okay. Now does that uh, does that take Wolford out of the game or is he? No, I, um, it's where they're at in the batting order, and I don't know all the changes that they're making. So Joe, we're going to kind of have to play this by ear till we see what he's who he's putting where because I'm sure the injuries are going to be a factor. I see Zima is in right field, but he was there. At least Last for inning. one out. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Last inning. All right. Now, who is this pitcher again? You, you don't this is John Crawford. John Crawford. Number He's 5'9", 170, a right-hander. And guy number 16. Okay, the new third baseman, and I believe Dan Guyon then would bat in the spot of Pat, Pat Kokon. So, number 16, Dan Guyon will bat in Pat Kokon's spot, and he's going to be the new third baseman. Okay. And I believe he's keeping Anthony Wolford in the game. And they're going to put him in left field. Yeah, there goes Wolford out to left field. So Wolford moves from pitcher to left field. All right. So will that move? 
<laughs> well, that moved Crawford into Eugene Ball's spot in the lineup. He had been the left fielder. Right. I would believe that now. They made a double switch, so it could either be Guyon or Crawford because they came in at the same time. But if they foul regular routine, Guyon will be in where Kokon is, and Crawford will be in Ball's spot. Okay, Crawford pitching. The pitcher is in left field. Leahy is in for Schneider, Guyon for Hines, Gazelle for Coniglia. Same spots in the batting order. Correct. That's why when we had this league all year with free substitutions, we told the coaches, you score the game yourselves. Long throw. And out. Dan Guyon. Was Farrar. Comes in and tosses over to Kyle Hine. Well, next year when you have that meeting, Tim, <laughs> you add, just add one thing. If there are television cameras at the field, please tell the poor devils hiding behind the screen what you're doing. <laughs> and we are getting messages now. We are, right. we yeah. are beginning to, to get the information. This is Luis Sonata. Now, he has been a busy ball player. He has two base hits, three runs batted in, and he scored a run. This is the home half of the fourth inning. One of uh, uh, Louis' strengths in baseball is pitching. And he's uh, pitched 10 and a third innings. Last 10 and a third innings, he hasn't given up an earned run. So if things hold true to form, Stella Walsh seems to be a very formidable opponent and representing Cleveland in the state tournament in Youngstown, Ohio. I really hope so, Tim, but remember, you're the guy who told me this was going to be a pitcher's duel. Oops. Ball slapped at the third baseman. That's Guyon, Dan Guyon, and uh, hit him in a bad place, the hands. So we've got one out and one on. Now again, Joe, you can see here, off-speed pitch here, ground ball. Third baseman was standing up, didn't have the glove down, fingers down. And again, I'm sure when he comes back in, the coach is going to be telling him. Here's Mike Stucco. Stucco batting for the first time. He moved into the lineup in place of Keith Johnson in the top of the fourth. You know, now we talk about history of baseball. Here we ask this kid, who is your favorite player? And he said, Babe Ruth. And the guy around him looked and said, Babe Ruth. Probably meant John Goodman. Fouled out of play. One on one. Yeah, well, how did he explain that, Tim? When the other kid looked at him, he said, you don't know who Babe Ruth is? And he says, I'm not going to explain it because you missed the greatest thing that ever happened to baseball. And I didn't say a word. I slowed it down. A ball to bring the count to two and one. You know, one of the things is, Joe, when you look at a baseball program or any recreation program, you know, the participants have the right to play. They have the right to learn. And, and that's what this program is all about. It's, it's giving them a chance to go out and play. Base hit to left field. Wilford fumbled the ball, and that allows the batter, Mike Stucco, to go down to second base. That is the eighth error of the game. Well, we see here it's a hard hit ball, goes through for a base hit. Again, Wolford down on knee, but didn't get the glove down. It was after the ball. Again, you can see the, the dejection and the frustration on Anthony. And the, the real story is that, you know, the Halloran baseball team has had an outstanding season. They've played well. This is not a typical game that Halloran plays. All right, this is Barton batting for Kaczynski. That'll be a straight change to left field.
Joe Barton. Four for 11 during the regular season. One ball, two strikes, one out, 10 to nothing in favor of Stella Walsh. Runners at second and at third. One out. Two down, and the batter Two down. is whomever gets to home plate next. Um, I think it's Mark Stucco. Well, you can see there, it seemed like he almost, when you looked at his hand, it was like a palm ball. He's coming in with an off-speed pitch. Catch it. Ball's dropping Mark a little bit for him. Yet I'm sure the coach went out there and said, look, just throw strikes. That ball is hammered to the short stop, and in time to retire the side. So we have played four fun-filled in innings. It is still 10 to nothing. And it says here on my sheet, we'll keep it right here, Tim Wells. So uh, now it's your turn, because I've got an hour and a half of score book writing to do. Well, one of the things, Joe, is as we've seen, you know, this game here as far as, well, here you see he gets down on the ground ball, comes up, Steps up and makes a good throw, and it was a nice scoop by the first baseman, Kyle Hines. But, you know, when you look at the Mickey Mantle League and you talk about baseball in Cleveland, it's not just baseball. There's other programs that are going to be coming up. And for our viewers in the city of Cleveland, there's some programs that are going to be coming up this fall, starting next month, that uh, teenagers as well as youngsters, they're going to range from organized sports such as flag football for all ages of teenagers on down to eight years old. We're gonna have peewee programs for kids five to seven. Uh, we're gonna have girls volleyball programs running in all the recreation centers. On the artistic calendar and cultural arts, there's gonna be some dance programs that's gonna be inserted as well as ceramics, some photography classes, all kind of programs that are gonna be put in to the recreation centers coming up this fall. You might want to call the Cleveland Recreation Center nearest you to say, hey, I want to get my kid involved. Schools, I know school's back in session. What can they do? Plenty of action. Even though the school will be starting next month, there's a lot of things that the kids can do. You know, we talk about baseball in Cleveland. So we have the largest adult baseball league in Ohio, 24 active teams that are playing right now here in the city of Cleveland which is like almost 500 participants, as well as we have kids playing in our rec centers, on our playground sponsored events, as well as in our parks, over 1,500 participants that the Cleveland Baseball Federation has been a part of making sure they have medical coverage if they don't, to take care of them in case of an injury. And that's so key the way our economy has gone today, as well as people we hear about the health care plans that the government's fighting to get for everyone in our country. Changes for Stella Walsh's defense. Now at first base, Mike Stucco. Mike Stucco at first base. In right field. We have number six, Nick Kubik. Nick Kubik is in the ball field. game. He is not going to bat. He is replacing uh, Sato Ortiz. Joe Barton. And uh, Joe Barton, at who did bat in the last inning, stays two. in the ball game in right field. Well, John Crawford gets his first crack up here. He came on to pitch in the fourth inning. We are now in the fifth, and it is 10 to nothing. Steve, right? Two. Ten runs, 11 hits for Stella Walsh. Good stop on the swing, and he is out of there. John Crawford, strikeout victim, but had to be thrown out. Again, the throw out, throw was necessary because the ball hit the dirt. You can see right here, ball in the dirt, swung at a breaking ball. Again, you want to run those out. You want to make him throw it. 
Get it down there. Number 19, Dennis Buzan. All right, we have a new batter in the number nine spot. Nick Knigley had been there, but he's not there anymore. And uh, it is Dennis Cazell. And Dennis is a student at Padua High School. He'll be entering the 11th grade this fall. Cazell four for 19 during the regular season. You'd have told us that Mark Ferrari would be sitting out here in the fifth inning with 10 runs to work with. I don't think anybody in the park would have believed it. But this is kind of a pitcher's dream. You get you get the run support, you have the defense. All I got to do is go out there and throw it over the plate. Ten to nothing is the score. Full count, three and two. One out. Been two big innings for Stella Walsh. They came up with three in the first. Louis Sonato had a two run base hit in that inning. And then in the third inning, everything went wrong. Four errors, three or four walks, six base hits, seven runs. And a strikeout. Guzel. Becomes the second of the inning. Again, you can see here, all coaches tell him, hey, hard and low. Nice fastball, just went right in there and challenged them. That's seven strikeouts for Farrar today. Danny Bowl, the catcher, is grounded out twice. All one. You know, we talked about Danny being a tough kid. He's over at John Marshall, and uh, he's also involved in the wrestling program with Gene Gibbons. He's been a veteran wrestling coach here in the Cleveland area, standing record, as well as he's involved with baseball at the school. So, you know, academically, he's kept his grades. Two balls and a strike. Top of the order, Dan Bowl. Brother David on deck, two outs. Three and one. Ferraris had pretty good control. He struck out seven and walked only one. Giving up two base hits. And he walks his second. Batter of the afternoon. Here's David Bowl, a strikeout victim of the first inning, and a fly ball to left field of the third. Two outs and a runner at first base. Shortstop, number four, David Bowl. All one. It's a one ball, one strike count. Well, the pitcher, the uh, pitcher threw it in there, and the hitter knew it. Yeah, that was the one I wanted. See if he can make up for it here. Runner going, throw it out to second base. Not in time, stolen base for Dan Bowl. Well, we can see here, again, it was an outside pitch. Didn't put the catcher in a good position to get out there and make a throw. 
But again, Danny Bull leads his teams with stolen bases this year. Foul ball, that should be out of here over the big fence, 2-2. Two -two. Danny had told us, he says, you know my favorite player is Kenny Lofton, and I play just like him. I get on base, and I can run. You saw a little bit of that there. Here comes the 2-2 pitch from Farrar. Breaking ball inside, full count. All right, three two pitch. Wrapped hard to third. The baseman got a handle on it for the minute, then couldn't stay with it. Everybody is safe. Runners at first to the third with two outs. Comes Dan Guyon up to bat. Guyon. We can see here he pulls the inside pitch against Serrano, comes up off the heel of the glove. Nothing he can do but knock it down and hold on to it. We got a first and third situation. That is the first error for Stella Walsh this afternoon. Halloran has eight of them. Strike one. Second base, watch the runner at third. Now standing on deck, Tim, to discuss the finer points of this game, many of which I obviously don't understand, is Kyle Hine. But why would Hine move down one spot in the batting order? Is he not batting out of order? Because Guyan actually replaced Cacone because Hine took over at first base. So absolutely, Joe. It would appear that we have a man batting out of order. Right. But officially, until the uh, team manager catches it and comes over, and technically, he doesn't bat out of order until he gets on base. Base hit. Halloran is on the board twice. Well, Mike Stu Mark Stucco is there with the tag, but safe at home plate is David Bull. Guyon has the two-run single. Now Hine is the batter, and we'll see if Stella Walsh detects that he's batting out of order. You can see the play here, and again, good call by umpire Gary Hesley slid under the tag. Now once this first pitch is thrown, Joe, it's history. Well, I'll tell you, with the substitution rules in this league, it would be almost impossible to know whether anybody was batting out of order. That'll be a base hit. And they'll put the brakes on Guyon. I'm not sure I'm ever going to justify this in my book because this makes no sense whatsoever. Well, Joe, it, all you got to remember <laughs> is who the starter is stays in that spot. Now you can see here again, Kyle Hine, he's been their hitter all year and he comes through and drops one into right field. Again, we're back to a first and third situation. And we have number 14 up. Anthony Wilford. And he is batting in the right spot. Yes. Okay. Go to second base safe there. Oh, they say he was out. All right, he was called out at second base. I assume that was Hine trying to steal second base. Correct. I don't know. Figure it out for yourself, folks. Well, here, we'll take a look at it. Again, it was an easy pitch to handle. Plus, he didn't get to the base. The tag was made before he reached in. And again, a good call by Jesse Harvey. 
And again, uh, you talk about running into outs. You're down eight. You got to save those outs. You don't want to. Kyle Hine doesn't have that extreme speed. And I'm sure that someone got crossed up on a signal. So, Joe, when we come back, it's going to be. Oh, we're still here. Yeah, when we have uh, Wilford to come back up to bat for Halloran. <laughs> that's, okay. that's very good, I'm just Tim. trying to figure out who's batting here. That's a, that's a way to go, buddy. <laughs> In that inning, as I'm slowly sorting this out, two runs on a total of two base hits. There was a man left, and there was one error. Now you know the Halloran people when they see this they're going to say it didn't matter. Hein got a hit and Guyan got a hit. They both got a hit so it wouldn't have mattered. Right. It's thinking like that that runs the post office. I know when uh, I was coaching in the high school that was one of the things I taught him. What happens when a guy bats out of order? You know, you don't go up and tell the ump he's batting out order because all they got to do is change him. That's right. Once he reaches first base, hey ump, he's batting out of order. Now they can declare him out. Well, in 16, 17 years with the Indians, I saw that happen twice. And on one occasion, the Indians got caught doing it. On the other side, it was never. It happened in the second inning, and they bat the guy batted out of order for the whole game. I think the Stella Walsh coaches are over here with our scores saying, hey, something didn't make sense that inning. So we're in the last half of the fifth inning. Look at that. Beautiful camera work. What a Great day. direction by Pat Murray. <laughs> they are still trying to sort it out here, folks. Now, according to... Uh, According to my book, it's going to be Serrano, Worrell, and Wehrman for Stella Walsh, and it is now 10-2 to two into the fifth inning. Okay, here oh, Kubik will bat. Well, then who won't bat? Well, right now we got Serrano up. <laughs> well, we'll take it as we that go. is clever. I, I, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> Kubik will bat for the DH. Well, I hope you folks watching at home care, and if you're friends and family, you probably do, because I'm totally confused. Right. Two and one, the count on, El on Elvis Serrano. He has singled twice and walked once. He has scored twice. Two and one the count. Now it's, and I thought for sure I heard the umpire say two and one, but this time the scoreboard was right and my hearing was wrong and it's a walk. The pitcher, I hope, is still Crawford. That's correct, Joe. Okay. And we have the same hitter, Rob Worrell. Worrell today has singled, bounced to third, and singled. He has scored twice, driven into. On the very first pitch, Serrano sets sail for second base and steals. Serrano, favorite player. Indians and Carlos Baerga, you see here. They pitched out. The throw wasn't there in time. Again, Serrano showing outstanding speed. The ball driven to center field and caught. Throwback gets away. And now indecision rules the base paths. And a bad throw down the left field line. And this time Serrano figures, what the heck, I'll stay where I am. Now, one of the things that really impressed me on this play, Joe, and it'll never go in a record book, is what Anthony Wolford did. You could see that the ball was hit to center and ended up throwing back in the infield, but he hustled to back up third base, and that prevented this guy from scoring. And you'll see that that kind of hustle, and you see players going out there backing up bases, 
you learn as baseball people do to learn those little things and appreciate them. Mike Werman is the batter. He has struck out, single twice, driven in a run, scored once. Ten to two, fifth inning. Ball one. Second baseman Mike Morgan. Ball two. Ball pounded to the second baseman. Oh, you talk about waiting for the ball to get to you. There was the classic example, and a run scores with a base hit. That's the third hit of the afternoon for Werman. Second RBI. Well, again, again, you see an outside pitch, ties the pull, we get a little hopper. And again, what's happened is you can see that Steve Leahy is kind of playing it as like, uh, I don't want to go get it. You got, and whenever you play defense, go get the ball. Charge it, come up and play it. Don't wait on it, because if you wait on it, that ball's going to take a hop and beat you. It's 11 to two. Second hit and first runoff, Crawford. Stolen base for Werman. Batter is Loomer. He pounds the ball to the third baseman. Guyon is throwing, but no chance. And now on the delayed move to third base, the ball was thrown away. Here comes Werman, and it is 12 to 2, and down to second base goes Loomer. Again, that was bad judgment on everyone's part. One, it was a bad, it was a ball that was hit. One of those where you can't do anything about it, you hold the ball. You can see here the ball's hit. The guy's going to have it beat, you're playing back. Hold the ball. Then he comes back and throws it across the field. This guy's already has third base. Shortstop did a nice job getting over to cover the base. But in this case, the last inning, Wilford backs it up. This inning, he stands out and doesn't back it up. It cost them the run. Well, now it is 12 to 2, and there's a base hit in the left field, and Wilford misplayed it. And another run scores, and it's 13 to 2 as Farrar gets his second base hit of the afternoon and moves up on the air. Well, we can see here it's a base hit through the hole. Wilford again sitting on the ball, not coming up to play it. Again, backed up by the center fielder, guy, and he throws in. Prevents him from scoring. 13 to 2. On the mound now is Kurt Grenig for Halloran. And I have to tell you something, Joe. When Kurt played for me, there was two things that irritated him more than anything. When the manager came out to talk to him, he used to tell <laughs> me, don't come out to talk to me. <laughs> well, he has made a pitching change, has he not? Or has he? Yes. That's David Bowl, right? Number four, David Bowl. Now pitching by David Bowl. All right. Now, my question to you is, what happened to Crawford? Crawford is See him out there someplace. Yes, Crawford just uh, moved over to play second base. Okay. All right. And Steve Leahy, who was playing second, just shifted over to short where Bull was playing. No change in the lineup, just defensive position. So Leahy is now at second base. No, Leahy is a shortstop. I see. And Crawford is at second base. And now we have the twin brother combination, pitcher and catcher. David throwing to Dan. Well, it's 13 to 2. Of that, I am sure. 
We're in the fifth inning. Stella Walsh batting. They've been doing it in bunches today. Three in the first, seven in the third. Now three more here in the fifth. Fly ball, center field. They have the outfield played the other way, and it drops for a base hit. The fourth hit of the uh, of the inning. Well, you can see here on the replay, again, it drops in. Again, the outfielder wants to get the ball into the cutoff people right away. They were shifted over to left center, and he punched it right through the middle. And that was Kubik, I believe, who hit. An er er earlier message we had received was that he was going to bat for the designated hitter. That's correct, Joe. Mike Stucco is the batter. He has been at bat one time with a base hit. One one count. Thirteen to two, and the count goes to two and one. Well, tell me, you uh, obviously know Mr. Grenick very well. Uh, I notice on the assignment sheet, oh, there's a shot, and it is a foul ball. I, I notice on the assignment sheet, I'm the guy that's going to have to go out and talk to these coaches when this is over. How is Mr. Grenick going to respond when I wave a microphone under his face? Is he going to do an Albert Bell or uh, what? No, no, because uh, sometimes when it's, him personally he really feels and, and I'm sure he's feeling for his kids right now but it's more than just just this game it's the whole season and the whole program and I'm sure that's the way that he'll be well there was another bad decision as Leahy wound up after bobbling the ball having no reason at all to throw it firing badly to first base and it's 15 to 2 and I think it's time to trot out the mercy rule Because Halloran has just arrived at that point in the afternoon where there's another run. I got the rundown guy on. Throws back to Crawford. This will be interesting. <laughs> they got two guys at second base. One yeah. guy, there we go. Well, I have, I hereby surrender my scorebook. I'm just going <laughs> to look at the scoreboard. I'll tell you what the score is, folks, because I have lost it completely. I have no idea who's doing what to whom or where. 15 to 2 is the score. Stella Walsh leads. That, I can tell you, it's the fifth inning. And everything else is beyond comprehension. Ball one. This is Mark Stucco. That one to the pitcher and bowl makes the put out that mercifully retires the side as again Stella Walsh has the beginning. Tony well, I think this is the sixth inning. Yes, it is. 15 to 2. And the first batter is Anthony Wilford, and he's out on the fly ball to right field. Mark Ferrar has been the beneficiary of some timely hitting and his own talent. He has pitched well here today. At the fifth inning where he gave up a couple of runs, uh, Kyle Hine tagged him for a two-run hit. 
Steve Leahy sends one foul. They're chanting MVP. And I'm sure it's for Ferrar, which I think is a pretty good choice, Tim. Yeah, he's kind of controlled the game. Stayed ahead of the hitters, threw strikes. One and one the count on Leahy. That's out of play, one and two. You know, it's odd, Joe, when you get games like this, you look at the men in blue like Joe Vulich was talking about, the Cleveland umpire and how he's been around for many, many years. But the crew we've had today has done a good job. And our hats have to go off to those unsung heroes of the baseball diamonds, the men and women in blue. Foul ball. I used to always tell myself when I was an official, hey, I, I got somebody on my side all the time. I never looked at the one that yelled at me. It was the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> one out with a one-two count on the batter. Two balls, two strikes. Steve Leahy has been to bat one time and struck out. It was interesting to hear Joe talk about umpires and, and qualities, consistent, fair, honesty. You know, and, and I really when uh, I'd gone around the sandlots and talked to some of the coaches and asked them about Joe Vulich, they talked about how we always kept the game enjoyable, no matter how much pressure or tension, people around them. Bouncer to shortstop, comes up on a good hop and in time, two down. Again, Ron Loomer showed some good range as well as came in, charged the ball in a nice play. This was a nice play by Loomer. Across the middle, good throw. That leaves it up to Brian Zima. One for two, takes the ball. 15 to 2 in favor of Stella Walsh. Ball two. Two and one. And unless Halloran comes up with four runs in a hurry. This is the final at bat of this ball game. The mercy rule will prevail. Fly ball, it's out of play. I hope that wasn't our car, Joe. I know it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I can see mine. <laughs> Here comes the 3-2 pitch. It's in the air, and it is, look out, John Payton came down right next to Big John, who is. Yeah, John Payton is the uh, program director for the Cleveland Baseball Federation. He's been very supportive of this program and seeing that it happens. Well, here comes the 3-2 pitch. Walked him. Now it's 3 2. That one it is grabbable by the third baseman, and this game is over. All right, we'll be back to wrap it up right after we take this final timeout. Hey, what are you doing? Just throwing your empty bottle in the garbage. Don't you know plastic's going in the blue container? 
Mayor Frank Jackson and the City of Cleveland are committed to keeping your neighborhood clean and green through the use of the city-issued trash and recycling carts. It's safe, convenient, and mandatory. For more information, contact the Cleveland Division of Waste Collection at 216-664-3717. How did you get to be so smart? I had a good teacher. All right, we're chatting now with the man who won the 100-yard uh, backstroke. Uh, actually, it looks that way because uh, the Stella Walsh team just gave him the winning baptism at the end of this 15-2 victory, uh, Coach Mike Penner. And, boy, you uh, pushed all the right buttons today, Coach. Yeah, um, everything that I thought would happen in the beginning of the game, I said we needed to hit their pitcher early. We hit their pitcher early. We needed to block the ball so they wouldn't go back to the backstop. We, we blocked the balls. and. Did, I, like you said, I, I tried. I did. guess I guessed right. <laughs> this was a ball club that jumped on the opportunity, and then uh, I think to your credit, you didn't let the other side get back into the ball game. Yeah, that's been a sort of problem all year. We, we jump ahead, and then we relax, and it, it sort of hurt the team all year, and I was trying in the playoffs, and later in the year, we have to go into a tournament to keep pushing and keep pushing because teams will come back. Pretty good tune-up for the state tournament, right? Oh, yeah. We're, we're, I think we're ready to go. A couple more practices will be there. Mike, uh, good luck at the state. Thank you very much. Let's call in the uh, MVP, yeah. Mark yeah. Farrar, who had it all together today. Two runs, four hits, struck out seven, walked only one or two. Uh, you really had it cooking today, Mark. Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the way you normally pitch, uh, pretty much on your game today? Yeah, basically. I mean, just go with the one-two and, and fastball and curve. Is it tough when you're out there and your team's up 10, 12 runs to maintain your concentration? Yeah, because you just want to like slack off or whatever. You know, you don't want to throw as hard because you want to hurt your arm. But I just pitched, so. What about the state tournament, Mark? <laughs> I don't know. You looking, you looking forward to it? Yeah, I guess so. All right, Mark, congratulations on getting the MVP honor. And to Mike Penner, the coach of the winning Stella Walsh team. And that's the story here from Gordon Park. And we'll be chatting with uh, Tim Wells again right after this timeout. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch. And by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed, but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Well, it was all a Stella Walsh day here at Gordon Park in the Mickey Mantle Championship as they were crowned city champions here today in a rout, 15 to 2 over Halloran. And they did it in style as we look at the stats. It was 15 runs on 12 hits and one error as Halloran had two runs, four hits, and they committed a whopping 15 errors. Couldn't pick up the ball, Joe. Mm -hmm. And that really was the whole story as Mark Farrar dominated the game. But truthfully, Joe, it was more than just Mickey Mantle baseball and the city title. Stella Walsh, and they'll remember this day for a long, long time. But it really was about City of Cleveland kids getting the opportunity to play baseball free of charge and really going out and not just learning baseball, but learning about life. Well, sometimes uh, the lessons you learn when you're down 15 to 2 are uh, maybe in the long run a little bit better than the lessons you learn when you're up 15 to 2. Yeah, when we go back and we think about all the great things that have happened, there's many people behind the scenes that have really helped us make this happen. I would be remiss if we didn't mention them, including you, Joe, coming out here, giving your time to the City of Cleveland Youth. We deeply appreciate it. And our director, Pat Murray, as well as Cable Vision, Dennis Knowles, Henry Picterna, Kathy Allen, and our camera crew gave us great shots here today at Gordon Park. So, Joe, thank you very much. Well, thank you, and we sincerely hope that you enjoyed today's ball game. Uh, look forward to working with Tim again and various other sports venues that come up for the Recreation League. It's certainly a very worthwhile organization in Cleveland, Ohio. This is Joe Tate for Tim Wells. Have a good night, everybody.